Hello, welcome to chapter 15 for business math called sales or in lesson 15.6 called markup rate based on cost. Uh, so as always, make sure you're reading the chapter, paying attention to the examples they give you, the formulas, key concepts. We don't want to just get through the calculations. We want to understand what we're doing. So as we move through the chapter and they start to put things more together, we understand the individual pieces because they don't just move on from piece to piece in the chapter. It kind of builds through the chapter, okay? So we definitely want to understand what's going on um, in each lesson so we can apply that as we go forward. All right, so let's go ahead and read the summary they give us here of the lesson. Your business may use the cost of a product as the foundation for the markup rate. Your ca you calculate the markup rate by comparing the markup to the original cost of the merchandise. The markup rate formula is, so we have markup rate equals markup divided by the cost. Pretty simple calculation there. Um, so for one through six here, pretty darn easy. I'm not really going to do a lot of these calculations for you. I'm going to kind of set it up and then move on here. So the markup, which we've done many, many times before, is just the, the cost that they actually make on the item. So, you know, um, or not the cost, sorry, the profit they make on the item. Cost is what, what they buy it for. Selling price is what they're selling it for. So if we subtract these two things, we'll know how much they're making on it. So, because we have to subtract the amount that we they purchased it for so that we know what the profit is. So you're going to do that for each one of these. You know, subtract. There you go. Um, and then you're going to calculate the markup rate based on the cost. So remember, it's markup divided by cost. So you just go markup, divide by the cost, and that'll give you your markup rate. Make sure you express this as a percentage. It's a rate, it should be percentage. Um, that's definitely what we're looking for um, for the answers. All right, let's go ahead and look at seven through nine. Um, so really the calculations are gonna be pretty close to the ones that we just did in the table. They just don't give you the table to fill it out. Um, so you're gonna look for um, cost. You're gonna look for selling price so that you can calculate a markup. So if we look at this first one, we have Jane Freed buys jeans for a department store. She pays $21.26 per pair. The store sells each pair for $42.50. What is the markup rate based on cost to the nearest tenth of a percent? So we have, we have cost and we have selling price. Um, so cost was $21.26. Selling price was $42.50. We have to subtract those to get our markup. Once we have our markup, we're, we're Pretty close here. All we have to do is divide by our cost, right? Pretty easy calculation here. Nothing too crazy, hopefully. Definitely hope you were following along there. Um, same exact thing for the next ones. You're literally just find your selling price, your cost, subtract for your markup, and then divide by your cost. Okay. Same process for all of these. Uh, let me see. The only difference they throw in here, which I'll, I'll bring up, is number nine does have based on selling price instead of cost. So they have you do this first part based on um, the cost column um, or the cost amount. And then they have you just calculate it again. You're just going to divide the markup by the selling price the second time so you can kind of see, compare the percentages. How does it change the percentage there based on the two? All right, let's go ahead and look at the algebra um, problem here. Remember, algebra does not mean it's going to be a more difficult problem. It just means we need to think about what we just learned and how can I apply it to the situation. Um, and most of the time, before the algebra problem, we're given all the pieces and asked to calculate a total. And then in the algebra problem, we're going to be given the total and we're going to be missing some piece and we have to go back and find it. So that's generally what they do in the algebra problems. But just, you know, just because it says algebra doesn't mean it's going to be a super difficult problem. just means we need to think about it. All right, so the Morgan Styling Salon sells its private label styling gel for $19.98 after a markup of 160% based on the cost. Find the cost and the markup. So we don't know cost. We don't know markup. And those are things we knew the cost before so that we could subtract it from selling price to find the markup. So we're missing some pieces here, right? So let's think about what we do have. Um, and let's try to use what we have up here. 
So markup rate, which they told us was 160. So I'm going to write 160 for instead of writing markup rate equals markup divided by cost. So the markup, let's see, we don't actually have the markup. So I'm going to go M for markup divided by cost. We also don't have cost. So we're missing enough pieces here that it, it changes the problem. But we do know how to calculate the cost. So um, the cost is going to be, oops, I'm going to bring it over here, is going to be 1998 minus the markup. Because that's kind of going backwards from how you calculate the markup. You would normally subtract the cost from selling price to get the markup. Well, now if we do it a little bit backwards, the, the cost would be the selling price minus the markup. We can just kind of manipulate that a little bit so that we have this um, formula. And what, what I'm doing is I want to substitute and I want to find a way. So I only have one variable. If I only have one variable, I can solve this problem because I can figure out what that variable is. But if I have two variables, if I have an M and a C, I can't solve that. There's, there's too many pieces there. So I need one variable in this situation. That's why I'm trying to figure out a way to replace C, or if I could, M, so that we only have one variable. So in this case, C was a pretty easy one to replace because I have selling price minus cost equals markup. Well, in this case, I, I don't know what C and M are, but I do know the selling price. The selling price is 1998, right? They, they told me that. They sell it for 1998. So I... That's how I ended up with this amount, 1998 minus C equals M. And then I just swapped these two. Um, so that way I, I have M on the side and C on that side. So C equals this amount. All right, so hopefully that made sense. I know that was kind of a long explanation. So I'm going to substitute this in. Instead of writing C, I'm actually going to write this right on the bottom like that. Excuse me. So now um, I want to get this out from underneath the bottom here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this amount, by the whole thing, the whole binomial. And if we don't remember from algebra, binomial just means there's two terms. So there's two pieces here. Um, so I'm multiplying both sides by this. And the reason I'm doing that is this will cancel. Um, because it's the same number divided and multiplied. If I divide a number by itself, even though this is kind of a complex looking number, still a number divided by itself cancels out, it becomes one. So now on, on this side, I'm just going to write it up here. I have 1998 minus M times 160% equals M. So I do get to distribute here. Boom. Boom. That's what we do when we have a number outside of parentheses. We need to distribute it. Um, so we have $19.98. No, sorry, $19.98 times 160%. So let's see. I already did that calculation. Um, and I can do this really quick on the calculator too, just so you can see it. So we have $19.98 times 1.6. Remember, 160%. I moved that decimal over two times. It's 1.6 equals. So I get 31.97 is what that said. Minus, and I'm just going to put 1.6 um, in front of M. And once I move that decimal, I don't need to put the percent sign there anymore. Um, I tend to do that in problems. It's probably not the best idea. It just, for whatever reason, helps me remember it's a percentage. Um, but we should probably change it to a decimal when we put it in the problem, just so that that's not confusing. So now I can add this to the other side because I want to bring these M's together, right? I want to make sure the, the variables on one side, again, coming going back to algebra a bit there. All right, I'm bringing this 3197 down. Any number minus itself, just like any number divided by itself. That's kind of what we want to do when we're working in solving a problem. So we either want to cancel it by making it one with multiplication division, 
or cancel it by making it zero with addition or subtraction. So I have 2.6m, and I'm going to divide by 2.6 on both sides here, like that. So this, once we do this calculation, again, 2.6 divided by 2.6 cancels. I'm going to let you guys finish that calculation up there. Um, so once you have that, you'll know what your markup is. Um, and once you know what your markup is, you can go back to this calculation to figure out what your cost was. Because we know cost equals 1998 minus our markup. So once we know what our markup is, we can just go back and subtract it from 1998 sorry, $19.98, and we'll have our cost. So um, a little bit more involved um, just because we're doing a little bit more of the algebra theme here with um, multiplying by a binomial and then distributing. Um, but hopefully that makes sense, and I really hope that helped. I will see you in Section 7.